We're going to continue with our series. This is week eight of an 11 week series. So we're getting close to winding up the difficult sayings of the Bible. We have looked at some very key points and we have talked about them. We began by looking at the paradox of the Christian faith. And in that paradox, Jesus says you must die in order to live. And we talked about what it means to die to self and to live for Jesus. And then we looked at Jesus as Jesus sought his one. And if you'll note in the bulletin, every week when you look at it, I am asking you for your one. Just like Jesus sought his one as he was moving down from Galilee into Jericho. And I asked you, do you seek those who do not have a relationship with God the way Jesus did? And then we kept looking at some other topics. Some of them was the resurrection. We looked at the evidence of the resurrection. And then we looked at the resurrection of the dead. And then Jesus taught us for a couple of weeks on discipleship. Last week, we touched on an issue that I don't think there's a person in this room that doesn't struggle with. And that was fear. Today is another key issue that if you were honest, let me just ask this way. Does anybody here has never worried? Okay, cool. Because I do. There are times when I worry. Jesus gives us a clear word about worrying, and that's what we're going to focus on today. So if you have your Bibles, and, and I hope you brought them, because we're going to be looking at a lot of passages of Scripture. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And when you get there, I'm going to ask if you're able, would you please stand with me in honor of our Father's Word? Matthew chapter 6, and we are going to look at Jesus speaking in verse 25. Jesus begins by saying, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, he will not much more clothe you, or will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Would you pray with me? Father, thank You so much for Your Son, Jesus. Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount is an amazing sermon, and we have the privilege today of sitting on that mountainside, listening to you teach and preach. Speak to us through the Holy Spirit now. Thank you that over 2,000 years have passed since you ascended into heaven, and yet your word still remains timeless. Thank you for this word for us today. And I pray now, Holy Spirit, that you speak. Because we have come here to hear you, and to see you, and to experience you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. So let's look at this worry. And I'm asking this question this morning, and I hope you'll jot it down. Here's the question when it comes to worry. If we are to really get down to the base issue, the issue is this. How much do you trust God? How much do I trust God? You see, we worry when we don't trust God. And, and trust me when I tell you, 
this sermon is for Mike as much as it is for you. Because this is something that I wrestle with. There are four things here that I want to show you that I believe Jesus is saying. First of all is this. Worry is unfaithful because of God. Worry is unfaithful because of God. Look at verse 25. Jesus opens up and he says, Therefore I will tell you, do not be anxious about your life. And then he moves on from there. Notice the word therefore. It is there for a reason. So anytime you see therefore, ask the question, what is it here for? Why is it here? In order to understand that, we have to go back to verse 19. So if you would, go back with me to verse 19. In verse 19, Jesus is talking to the people on that mountainside. And he's telling them, don't lay up treasures that are in this world, but lay up treasures that are in heaven. In other words, Jesus is saying, pursue me, let me be that which makes you breathe. Let me be that which excites you. Let me satisfy you. In verse 22, Jesus continues by saying, Be careful what you see, because your eyes are the lamp of your body. And what you see goes directly into your mind, which moves into your heart. And Jesus is saying, Guard your heart, guard your mind by what you see. And then he continues on in verse 24, and he says, Look, you can't serve two masters. Either you're a slave to God or you're a slave to the world. You can't ride the fence here. And so many of us in the church today are trying to do that. We're trying to ride the fence. We, we are kind of in with God, but then we're kind of in in the world and we're just kind of straddle the fence. Jesus is saying, either be here or be there, but choose where you stand. And so he's encouraging his disciples to make sure they understand that their loyalty to Him cannot be divided. And, and I want to encourage you here. Your loyalty to God can't be divided either. It's kind of like me and Mary Lou. Honey, I love you, but I really don't. Kind of tick me off, but no, we're not there yet. I kind of forgive you, but really I don't. I'm either all in or I'm all out. Jesus is saying, worry is unfaithful because of God. Now we're ready for verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. What you choose matters. What you choose matters. Who holds your heart? Who holds your heart? Who have you given the privilege to hold your heart? Jesus is saying, don't worry about food. Don't worry about drink. Don't worry about clothes. Those things are important, but I can provide for you. Go to Philippians. And again, please hold your place here because we're going to be moving throughout Scripture today. Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 5 through 7. The Bible says here, Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Here it is. Do not be anxious. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication or petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Here's what I want you to get. Know this. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, if you surrender to God, God will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Now, there are a couple of phrases I want you to say with me. So I'm going to say the phrase, and I want you to repeat it. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Do you believe it? God is good. All the, time. all the time. And all the time, all the time, God is good. Here's a second phrase I want you to say. Remember this. Where God guides, repeat it with me. Where God, God, provides. God provides. Where God guides, God provides. God provides. See, when you know this, you worry less or not at all. Simple words, but you have to choose. I was watching the, the, the playoffs last night, 
And this old boy was up there, the count was full, and I watched him. The camera went down to his feet, and this is what he did. You baseball players in the room, you'll get this. This is what this guy did. He was determined he was going to hit the ball. And so the camera, for some reason, went down and looked at the stance this man had in the batter's box, and this is what he did. He took his foot, and he twisted it like this. And then he took this foot, and he twisted it like this. Now ask me why. He was determined he was not going to move that he was going to hit that ball with everything he had. And so he dug his cleats into the dirt and he twisted himself like this. And then the pitcher threw the pitch and the guy slapped it out of the park. It's just kind of one of those rare moments when the camera shows you that. Now this is, this is for you. This is the object lesson here. Worry is unfaithful because of God. Second, Jesus says worry is unnecessary because of God. Now look at verse 26 with me. Jesus continues and he says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Don't forget who you are. Go to Genesis, the very first page of Genesis chapter 1. In the very beginning of your Bible, you will find it there. Genesis chapter 1, move down to verse 27. And in verse 27, the Bible says, So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You were to write these words in the margin right next to this verse. Imago Dei. Imago, I-M-A-G-O, Dei, D-E-I. Imago Dei. You are the Imago Dei, the image of God. Don't ever forget, on the sixth day, the crowning achievement of God's creation was man and woman, the human race. You are the crowning achievement. You are the Imago Dei of God, the image of God. Don't ever forget who you are. Worry is unnecessary because of God. Don't forget how much value you have to God. Verse 27. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? You can't increase your longevity by worrying. I wish my mom was here to hear this. You cannot increase your life by worrying. Here's what I tell people when I counsel them and they talk to me and they have something major in their lives and there's a crisis of belief for them. This is what I would tell them. Focus on what you can control and let everything else go. Focus on what you can control. You can't increase, decrease, change your lifespan. Your lifespan is set by God. Remember Philippians 4, 6, and 7, where God guides, God provides. Remember that. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Your worrying is not going to change that fact. So let's keep moving. Verses 28 through 30. In verse 28, and 29, Jesus says, And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And you got this is something. Because Solomon in his lifetime was the wealthiest human being on the planet. There was nobody more wealthy than King Solomon when Solomon lived in Jerusalem. Nobody. People came from hundreds of miles away to see the palace. This man's throne was de just decorated and made purely out of ivory and pearl. I mean, it was amazing. No one had ever seen it. And yet, listen to what Jesus says. Why are you anxious about clothing? Here's an illustration that he gives. Look at the lilies. Consider the lilies, how they grow. I want to remind you, a lily doesn't control its shape. It doesn't control its size. It doesn't control where God is going to plant it. It doesn't control the color that it possesses. Only God impacts the lily and controls what the lily will do and how long it will do it. And my friends, God knows your future as well. Only God can give you that which you need. Only God can give you that which you must have. Only God can satisfy the hole in your life. Worry is unnecessary because it doesn't change that truth. Verse 30. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown to the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? 
Lilies like grass, like you, are temporary. Now, we will outlive a lily, most of us. Whether we live two weeks, two days, two minutes, two hours, 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 100 years, 120 years, God controls our lifespan. We are finite. He knows when we begin. He knows when our lives will end. He controls it all. So don't worry about that which you cannot control. And here's what I want you to hear from me this morning. Worry is not a trivial sin. Worry is not a trivial sin when it comes to you and your relationship with God. You need to understand this. Worry strikes at the heart of God's love for you. It strikes the very heart of how much God loves you. You see, when you worry, you're telling God, you don't love me like you should, so I'm going to worry about what you're going to do next or what you're not going to do. Second, worry strikes at the heart of God's power. When we worry, we're really saying, God, I don't trust you to take care of this. When we worry, we're really saying, God, you're not able to take care of this. That's why I'm worrying. You see how your worry is connected to your trust? The more you trust God, the less you will worry. Third, worry strikes at the heart of God's integrity. Don't ever forget that. And please remind me of that the next time you see me worrying. Worry strikes at the heart of God's integrity. Hebrews 13, 5, the Bible says, I will never leave you, God speaking, I will never leave you or forsake you. You see, when you worry, you don't believe that is true. And it strikes at the heart of God's integrity. So note this, worry is not a trivial sin. It is serious. Worry is unfaithful because of God. Worry is unnecessary because of God. And third, I want you to see that worry is unreasonable because of God. Worry is tied directly to your relationship with God. I mean, it's, it's directly in sync with your relationship with God. Last night I was worried. Alabama was playing Georgia and it wasn't looking good. Georgia was kind of doing what they wanted to do and I was like, I can't even watch it. So I, I just turned it and went to watch a movie and came back and it was a tie game. And I'm like, well, dude, you're stupid. Worrying about him. Bama's got this. Went away and came back a little while later. Bama was losing again. And then suddenly the tide of the game changed and Alabama ended up coming out on top. Sorry, guys. But I want you to know my worry didn't change the outcome. There were 22 men on that field playing a game, and I could not influence any one of those 22 men by my worrying. They were going to do what they were going to do. When you walk with God, you cannot change what God is going to do. You can only submit to his leadership. Look at verse 31. Jesus says, therefore, do not worry or be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Jesus is saying to you, do not worry about anything, because I have everything in control. It's hard for us. Worry is difficult for us because we want control. And there are times in our lives, there are moments in our lives when we lose control and we worry. Notice what he says in verse 32. Jesus says, For the Gentiles seek after food, clothing, shelter, all these things, and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them all. My encouragement to you, and again, I wish my mom was here to hear this, my encouragement to you is let God have control. And you will worry less. Here's a test for you. I'm going to give you two passages of Scripture. Go to Psalm chapter 46 and look at verse 10. Psalm chapter 46 and verse 10. The next time your heart palpitates, the next time your blood pressure goes up, the next time your palms begin to get sweaty and your feet begin to perspire, the next time you sense you're losing control and you begin to worry, I want you to remember Psalm 46, verse 10. Look at it with me. Psalm 46, verse 10. Here's what I want you to do the next time you begin to worry. I want you to close your eyes. Do it with me. Close your eyes. Breathe in slow and deep. 
Let your blood pressure begin to come down. Relax. Pause. Be still. And know that He is God. The next time you begin to worry, whatever it is you're worrying about, just stop, close your eyes, be still, and know that He is God. You have to know this in your soul of souls. You have to know this in the deepest recesses of your mind. You have to believe that God is who He says He is. Be still and know that He is God. Is God. Turn the pages to your right to Proverbs chapter 3. And I want you to look at verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. When you are being still, I want you to remember to do this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Be still. Close your eyes and breathe in slow and deep. Not shallow, but slow and deep. Calm down. Relax. Be still and know that He is God. And then, in that moment, you trust in the Lord with every fiber of your being. You trust in the Lord with all that you have because He's God and He's in control. And you're giving Him control. And there's no need for you to worry. It's an exercise I hope that you will do. Worry is unreasonable because of God. Worry is unfaithful because of God. And I want you to remember that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Where God guides, He certainly provides. Worry is unnecessary because of God. Worry is not a trivial sin. It strikes at the heart of God's love, God's power, and God's integrity concerning you and your relationship with Him. And worry is unreasonable because of God. When you find yourself worrying again, be still. Close your eyes. Relax. Breathe in slow and deep. And know that He is God. And then trust Him with everything you have. And you will notice your blood pressure will drop. You will stop sweating. You will be more relaxed. You still may not have the answers, but you won't need them because you'll be walking by faith and not by sight. And that's where God wants you to be. Fourth and finally, worry is unwise because of God. Three times Jesus tells us in this text not to worry. You see it in verse 25, you see it in verse 31, and you see it again in verse 34. Verse 25 Jesus reminds us that God alone gives you life and God alone can sustain you. And in verse 31, Jesus reminds us that God provides and He will take care of every physical need you have. You just have to trust Him. And in verse 34, Jesus tells us that worrying about tomorrow is foolish. Look at verse 34 with me. Therefore, anytime you see the word therefore, you have to ask, why is it here? What is the reason it is here? Do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Worrying about tomorrow is foolish. I am worried for my country. On November 3rd, we will vote for the next president of the United States. Look at where my feet is on this platform. For the first time in my lifetime, we are standing on the abyss and our feet are off the ledge. And we are willing to dive into a hole of cesspool of sin and rebellion. And for the first time, I'm worried about my country because I think we're ready to take the dive and not follow God. Just remind me of what I just told you. See, I know that my God is bigger than my worry, and I know that my God knows the outcome of what our country is going to do in just a few days. And so I'm trying not to worry, because I don't want my country to go to a place that I never thought it would go to in my lifetime, and yet I can't stop it. But together, as the church, we can. 
if we will trust God. 2016, 35% of the church voted in the United States. Write that number down. 35% of the church. How do we know this? Because we know that the number of people that put on their ballots, they were Christian. 35%. Faith family, if we vote that way this time, we will lose our country. And you will see it happen. And so, I'm fighting worry. It's real for me. I'm just like you. I have to remember to do what I'm asking you to do. Jesus says that a good steward will not worry about tomorrow, but he will take three steps. So look at the verse with me. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus is not telling us not to be good stewards of tomorrow. He is telling us not to worry about that which we cannot control. Three keys I want to give you. For planning for tomorrow, first is this, you must plan and be prudent for tomorrow. He who does not plan for tomorrow is a foolish man. The Proverbs tells us that. So we must plan for tomorrow. I'm planning for my retirement. Now, you have to hear me. Preston can tell you this is true. Pastors never get to retire. Because God calls us to full-time Christianity. Am I right? So that means we're going to serve God until we breathe no more. But one day I will get to a point when physically I will have to do something else. I will continue to serve God, but just not in the lead pastor capacity. But I must plan for that day. I must plan on how I'm going to take care of Mary Lou. Our kids are now gone. Rachel is the last one. Next month she'll be gone because she's spreading her wings like our other children. And she's flying into adulthood. And I can't do anything about it. It's my baby. Sorry. But for the last 30 years, I have been planning for tomorrow. Because Scripture tells me I must. And so I'm preparing for that day if God allows me to see it. Now, now just to be transparent with you, longevity is... Okay, in my family, most of my relatives live into their 80s. Most of hers live into their 90s. I know that I will probably go home before she. So I've been planning for the last 30 years to make sure when God takes me home, she doesn't have a care in the world because she's taken care of financially. I am planning for tomorrow. It is prudent and it is wise. Second, a good steward invests for tomorrow. I am invested in financial instruments to try to make my money work harder than it does if I put it all in the bank. Because the bank savings loans and the credit unions are going to take my money and they're going to pay me minuscule amount of interest just like they do you. And they're going to take our money and invest it in Wall Street. So I invest in Wall Street just like they do because I know how to make money. And so I invest for tomorrow so that my money works harder today so that when God says, okay, it's time. Mary Lou and I can prop our heels up because we have saved well and invested well and we prepare for tomorrow. Third, a good steward provides for tomorrow. And that's what I'm trying to do is provide for my wife for tomorrow. See, Jesus is not saying, don't be a good steward. Jesus is saying, don't worry about that which you cannot control. Worry is unwise because of God. Go to Isaiah. Hold your place here. Last passage. Isaiah chapter 26. I want you to look at verse 3 and 4. Isaiah 26 verses 3 and 4. Isaiah says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in God. God keeps man in perfect peace when man is stayed on God. God gives you the peace that you need when you place your full and complete trust in Him. Now, how, how important is this? Look at what Isaiah does. Go to verse 1. Isaiah says, We have a strong city. He sets up salvation as walls and bulwarks. 
And then he moves into verse 2. Notice, if a city will put their trust in God, God will provide and protect and defend and give them what they need. Verse 2, he says, open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. When a nation walks with God, it becomes powerful and strong and secure. But when a nation chooses not to walk with God, everything changes. And then in verses 3 and 4, Isaiah focuses on the individual. And he says, he who puts his complete trust and faith in God will have perfect peace. You see, worry is unfaithful because of God. Because where God guides, God provides. And God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. It's not just a saying. It is real. And for those of you in this room who have placed your complete trust in God, you've experienced this and you know it. Worry is unnecessary because of God. This is not a trivial thing. It strikes at the heart of God's love, God's power, and God's integrity. Worry is unreasonable because of God. Be still. When you find yourself worrying again, stop. Slow down. Close your eyes. Be still. And know that He is God. And trust in the Lord with everything you have and God will take care of you. Worry is unwise because of God. Are you trusting in God? Kathleen's future, our faith family's future is driven through this. If we choose as a faith family, you and me and my family, if we choose walk with God and to place our trust in God and to take our hands off of life's table and to say, my yes is yours. Take me and do with me what you will. Kathleen will never know what hit them, but they'll be smiling all the way. And they will see life and they will see happiness and they will see joy and they will see prosperity and they will see the hand of God moving on this campus through you and through me and my family if we will choose to surrender it all and give it to Him. How much do you worry? And how much do you trust God? Remember this. The more you worry, the less you trust God. The more you trust God, the less you worry. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? I'm going to ask you in just a moment to listen to the voice of God and listen to Him as He speaks to you. There are those of you in this room who do not have a relationship with God. and I've been talking to Christians today, but I'm also talking to you. How much do you worry? You see, you don't have to worry. You don't have to be alone. God is reaching out to you. He wants to have a relationship with you. All you have to do is Say yes. Ask God to forgive you. Confess what you have done against Him. The Bible calls that sin. Admit to God that you're a sinner and you just didn't understand how you had hurt Him with what you've done and said. And then just tell Him the truth. I don't know why my heart is so stirred in this moment. But I don't want to be alone anymore. I want you to help me and to guide me you show me how to live. My life is yours. Would you be my God? I'm going to ask you in just a moment as the team behind me plays to come down and tell me you've made that decision so that we can celebrate that truth with you and I can help you and we can help you as a church to know what comes next in your new Christian life. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you this morning if you are a person who has been consumed by worry, I want to ask you to leave your seat and decide to come up here and lay it up here on this platform symbolically. Say, God, I'm giving you my worry. I'm not going to worry about this anymore. Instead, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you to do that which I cannot. Whatever that issue is in your life, I'm going to ask you to get rid of it today, right now, in this moment, and to turn a new page in your relationship with God. There are some of you here that God may be leading to join our faith family. 
you come. Just say, Mike, man, God is just encouraging me, telling me this is my new home and I want to join it. We would love to celebrate your decision. Father, as men and women within the sound of my voice are listening to you, I pray, Holy Spirit.